Hello, and this will be a tutorial series on how to create a timeline in C++ that is pretty much equivalent to a blueprint timeline. We're going to have a pretty simple timeline here, um, and here is the blueprint example right here. I will show you. It just goes up and down. That's it. And I'll show you the code as well. It On begin play, it will get the actor's location and it will have a uh, Z offset variable that we can edit in the editor and then just add it to the Z and then have that as the end position. And then we just start playing the timeline and then it just lurps between the two vector locations for set actor location. And then when it's finished, it will reverse. And then when it comes back to it and if it was back going backwards, so reversing, then we hit play and it tells it to play. Pretty simple but we're gonna make that in C++. So, first thing you wanna do, and I've already done this, is I, you don't need to create the folder, but create a curve. And you can do this by right click, go to miscellaneous, and curve. And then, when you come into the editor, here I'll delete all these. All right, when you come into the editor, all you have to do is hold shift, left click, and you have and you can specify the time which I will put at zero and the value which will also be zero since it's lurping between zero and one and then I will shift and left click again to create another node or a little dot or keyframe sorry in the timeline and then we will select two seconds and then the value of one that means it's the end of the timeline and then hit fit horizontal and fit vertical and then you can just hit auto you have to select them, hit auto, and it will make them smooth the same way that the other timeline does. And that's it. Save it, and then you're done for that part. And then we go into C++ classes, and then you just create a new class. And we could do just actor, but I'm going to do a static mesh actor. So that way it has a static mesh already put into it. Static mesh actor. There it is. You just select that, hit next, and we're going to rename it to floating actor. Create class. While it's compiling, I'm going to tell you that uh, timelines are essentially components that you add to the class. Sorry about that. And pretty much all you have to do is we're going to add public. Well, we could just do protected. Well, no, we need public. So we do need to create the constructor. So I'm just going to do public and then a floating actor, parentheses, and line. And then we have the constructor. And then what we're going to do is declare our timeline component, as I said before. So uh, class u timeline component, when I learned how to type. And then we're going to name it my timeline and then end the line. And that's going to be it for the timeline, at least until we create the, actually we'll do that after IntelliSense loads. So next, hang on, let me get my notes open so I don't screw anything up. Next, you also need to have a curve because like we created in the editor at the beginning, we created our curve. So now we have to create a variable so we can get that asset. So all you have to do is class u curve float because it is of type float f curve. All right? And then we're going to have u property and then edit anywhere so we can just drag it into level and select it and stuff category timeline and let's create the constructor and then it's going to load for us so after this we're also going to create our start and end locations which are two vectors and you can do that while mine is my thing is loading there we go and primary actually we don't even need to do that we can just do this and then in here we're going to do our start and end locations so you, and we don't need to show them in the editor really, so we can just do U property for garbage collection and then F vector 
uh, start location and then you pro property effector end location and then we're gonna get our Z offset which is a float so we just do float float Z offset and then also you property but this one we're gonna make it uh, edit anywhere so we can also edit it in the editor category timeline as well timeline all right so this is what we have so far uh, we have the basic kind of things down let's go back to the constructor and let's create our timeline default object all right so my timeline uh, equals create default sub object there it is you timeline component and let's name this uh, timeline because it doesn't really matter now you don't need the at you don't need the setup attachment or anything because it is like the movement component where it just gets added to it but it doesn't need to be directly connected to every to any components all right now another thing you are going to need to include a uh, specific include library and I'm gonna post in the description here it is it's pretty much for the timeline component you can also uh, go to Unreal Engine 4's uh, documentation page type in you timeline component go to the bottom if you find the correct one go to the bottom and it should have the reference for runtime engine classes components timeline dot h and you can just copy that as well so well, now we're now that we've done that we're going to add in our begin play function all right let's comment this constructor all right and virtual void begin play override since it is virtual we can override it and all actors have this so I'm going to create the definition. It's going to be loading for me. It can be fast, and then it, be, it does this, and it's just not fun. But um, this is where we're going to be declaring, or not declaring, but essentially allowing for the timeline to start and such, and starting our initial values and whatnot, because we're not going to be doing that mostly in the constructor. All right, uh, this is also... Yeah, I don't need to, you know what begin play is, hopefully. So, next, there is something called a delegate. Two delegates, actually, that we need to create. And then we need to create the functions. Actually, let's create the functions first. So, we're going to do u function, and these are going to be both empty functions, but they're u functions nonetheless. They're both void. Uh, one has an input parameter of float. And that's this one is going to be timeline. Time line. I I don't know what just happened with my brain. Timeline float return. And it's going to be float. And then we're going to put in val value. And that would be it for that one. U function. And then this one's going to be just the regular void. No parameters. Just empty uh, on timeline finished so this is where we're going to be able to tell when the timeline is finished it's going to call this function and the timeline float return is where the stuff for update so if we go to our example this line or this little node or this execution pin uh, connected to everything else that's what this function does is essentially the update part and finished is what we're going to connect with this. So it's essentially just binding these is the part that kind of confuses people with timelines and just kind of how they function in C++. But once you get this, it should make sense. And we're creating we've just created our functions, but now we need to create our delegates. And a delegate essentially is a connector. Like that's the simplistic answer. I will be posting uh, two 
documentation links for you to go and read uh, their text documents, but they are fantastic for information because one of them, he uh, explains what an, a delegate is. Like he links to one where he explains what a delegate is. And the other one is the one that we're using sort of for timelines. Um, he In the one that explains delegates, he uses he uses timelines in a uh, tick and you don't need to do that. But, you know, he chose to and yeah. All right. So we're going to create our delegates. So F on timeline float. And this is the float delegate. So this is what we're going to use to connect to this, this function. And then we're going to name it interp function. And then use these brackets and then end the line. So now that, that we now that we've created that, let's comment it so that way you guys can come back to it later and know what it is. So declare our delegate. I learned how to spell delegate recently. <laughs> function to be connected with or no binded with this function oops float now you don't need to enter the parameter you can just put the name of it but I, I usually do that all right so now now that we have that for this one, like we have the variable, but we need to actually bind it, and we will do that in the constructor. All right. Some people like to do it in begin play. Some people like to do it in another function. You can. We're just doing it in the constructor for educational purposes of this video. So f on timeline event, and then this will be our timeline finished delegate. So then we just connect, this one is an event. So a signature of a timeline event. This one uses floats, where it needs to have a float uh, input that we can use. So let's comment this one as well. You don't need to put the way I do, but if you want, you can. Declare, declare our delegate function to be binded with and then we just put the name and then space. There we go. All right. So just in case we're going to, this is bothering me as well. So do that. It's just how I roll with comments. All right. Uh, that seems about it for the header file. Now we're going to start doing stuff in the source file. So first things first, binding our uh, delegates and also setting our default value for z offset. So, interp function dot when it intelligence loads, you know, there we go. So, what you want to do is bind u function, and it was already available to me at the top, which I liked. So, then you put this and then you put the name of the function and you put f name parentheses and then you just put the name so this is the interp function so we're going to use this one and you don't need to put this part it's just the name of it so it can find it and then we just end the line and now we bind the on timeline finished with time oops timeline finished dot and there it is against the top thank you intelligence this f name and it's the same way you just have to change the names for specific things, obviously. And then we go Z offset equals 50. Because we want to make sure that we see it, the difference. If we put it too low, if we put it kind of low, you're barely going to notice it's going to go boop, up, down, up, down. If we put 50, it goes, yeah, 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 you know. So yeah. All right. So begin play. That's where we're going to be doing stuff. Um, I forgot one thing. Super begin play. There we go. Now we have our begin play set up correctly. Um, 
Let's actually make the primary actor. No, well, yeah, let's do it. Primary actor tick b can ever tick equals true. Gen you know, just in case. And then we're going to check if our curve, remember that? Or well, not that, f curve is valid. Check if curve is valid. Curve s it reference is valid. Because we kind of need that to actually use the timeline, otherwise it wouldn't work. Because it needs to have a thing set up. Otherwise it just fires and that's it. Alright. So now my timeline. And what we're gonna do is we're going to add in the float uh, curve and the function that we're using. So pretty much uh, creating the curve and the alpha and whatnot. I'll show you. I'll show you guys in a second. Add inter float uh, f curve. No, why does it keep doing that? F curve. There we go. And then interp function since we binded in the constructor. And then what we're going to do is the property name, which would be the float value. So f name. And then we're just going to name this alpha. There we go. So then what we just did is connected the delegate to our curve to our timeline. So our timeline needed is asking for, all right, with this function, you want to add a curve and a function that uses that curve. And we're just using this as like the property name. But so this would be pretty much this or connected to this now. So we, when we binded it, we said, all right, this function is this. So now what I want you to do with this function is make the parameter or the input parameter be this curve, which is a float curve. So that means this gets turned into this. I hope you can understand. It makes sense like once it's running and you kind of, yeah. So my timeline and what we're going to do next is set what happens when it's finished. So they have a function called set uh, timeline finished func, even though it apparently, <laughs> yeah. So then all you have to do is timeline finished and that's it. That's it for that function because we already binded it. It's not going to be inputting anything or returning anything. It's just function that happens, you know. Actually, I think we could probably just have something that also returns something, but it wouldn't matter. It's just, you know, it's most, well, yeah, I think it, it should work with void. I always use it with void. So next, we're going to be setting our vectors. Set, setting vectors. And actually, let's also comment this. Add the float curve to the time line and connect it to the interp functions delegate. All right, and this one add our time on timeline finished function. There we go. All right, now let's set up our vectors. So start location equals get actor location so it's going to be our location at the be on begin play and then end location no end location equals start location and then we're going to add well actually yeah well no let's do it all in one line f vector and let's copy that so dot x, whoops, dot x, comma, this dot y, comma, this dot z, plus our z offset, and then end parentheses. So now 
we're setting it to, we're pretty much doing this part right here in one line. So now we're going to be setting our timelines, uh, oops, setting uh, our timelines settings <laughs> before we start it. And my timeline is going to not loop, so we set looping to false. Because if you set it to true, then it, when you play it, it'll only play from start and not from, it won't reverse or anything. It only plays from start and just keeps playing from start over and over. So if I was telling it go up, it's just going to go up and then jump back up and then teleport up, teleport up, you know. And then my timeline, this is one just good to know, uh, set ignore time dilation. And we set it to true. That means if you edited the global world time dilation, pretty much if you want to make everything in the world slow-mo, then if you set this to true, then it will ignore that and it'll just run like normal. If you set it to false, then it will kind of move at the same speed as the global time dilation. So that's just good to know. And we're just doing that so you guys can see it. Uh, my timeline. And now we're going to start it. So play. And that's it. Start our timeline. So when I call the play function, this starts firing. And the way it works, it's going to keep firing until the timeline has ended. And I'm going to show you guys how you can check to see um, if it's finished or not and stuff like that. And yeah, so here's what you do. You, since we're only going to be setting the location and just lerping it, like in the blueprint, all we have to do is set actor location and then f math uh, lerp and it says quaternion we don't it doesn't matter so we can do start location and look no end location and then value which would be our alpha as you can see so pretty much this is just going to be the value of our curve and since we're playing from start, it's going to be doing what the curve was set to for this. Here, let me bring it up. So it's going to start at zero. And as the timeline continues, it's going to go all the way up to one. In two seconds, it'll do that, actually. So it's just going to keep firing this for two seconds. Just So it's going to be smooth, though. All right. So our timeline is finished. We want it to go back up or go back down. So it's gone up. We want it to go back down. We call my timeline, and then you just do reverse. Like it's the same names as the pins from the input pins. So you have play, play from start, stop, reverse, reverse from end. I set new time probably, but I never use that ever. Like even in blueprints. So yeah. But what happens when it's finished and you're at the bottom? If we say reverse, it's just going to stay there because it's going down, you know, it's trying to get back to zero. So what we can do is if my timeline and you can get the current um, like time that it's playing at called get playback position. So get playback position and then you check to see if it equals zero. Whoops, zero. If it does, then we will just my timeline play and then it will start playing and then let's do an else so that way whoops and I'm using the home and end keys to essentially get to the beginning and end of a line and I'm holding shift when I do that to select the whole line but pretty much when the time when the current playback position gets back down all the way back down to the bottom it's going to call timeline finished because that means we told it to do something and then when it hits the uh when it hits zero that usually calls on timeline finished and then it will do this and it will check to see if our playback position is equal to zero which it should and we can also do just as a buffer if it's less than but it won't go less than because it's clamped 
Like timelines are clamped. They won't go many, like more or less than. So, it, and our playback position and our length of the timeline is based on the curve. So all you have to do if you want to make it longer, like the whole timeline length, you just increase this time. Or you can make it shorter and it will affect it. And I'll show you when the game is playing or when we start playing. So at this point, we could technically just compile and play it and it will work. But I also want to give you some debug stuff as well. So glog log, and this will output to our uh, to our output log here so we can see it as a little message. And let's say play. And I'm gonna, whoops. And then that. And we're just going to name this one reverse. So that way when it plays, we'll, it'll let us know. And then when it reverses, it will let us know. But you can also, another way would be put it inside of this. And it would check to see if our playback position is equal to zero. Then you would tell it to play and reverse. But it would be checking constantly while it's playing. Only while it's playing. This only gets fired. This whole thing gets fired once. And it's much more efficient just in terms of just general more efficient because you're essentially calling this once whereas you could call it multiple times for no reason because it's still going to only happen once once it gets through this happen this fires once or this happens once and then it will not be able to get into the if statement or the else well it would get into the else because it's false if we put else if um actually this is good to also see my timeline get playback position uh, if it equals my timeline get uh, length timeline length and this is essentially how long the timeline is going to play and uh, so whoops wrong one let me minimize that uh, so pretty much the length is this or the last uh, keyframe in the curve that we set and you can add multiple uh, float, or you can add multiple curves and stuff like that. Should be pretty pretty easy to understand if you used uh, timelines in blueprints and you just want to learn what the syntax is for C plus plus. This is pretty much it. Um, yeah, let's actually compile now. I should have probably done that while I was explaining it to you. And once it finishes compiling, there we go. We're going to create a blueprint class. Uh, BP underscore and then we'll put it in here and we're gonna set our static mesh to a torus because I like donuts donuts are cool all right so we drag this into level hit play wait it's not working what what does that mean it I know what it means it means um, we're missing our curve since we created one already we can just select in our class defaults and yeah and then hit compile save play oh right that's another thing i forgot about that you have to set the actor to movable for static mesh actors <laughs> but yeah it'll, it will work if you just use a regular actor but as you can see it's working and it's also firing down in the output log here let me show you in the output log it's firing play when it's going up reverse when it's going down um, let's make it really fast let's make it 0 0.5 and it's going to be smooth too so see so yeah uh, let's put this back to let's put it back to 2 so yeah, that's how you create timelines, at least the simplistic version. If you guys want to get more complicated with that, that's on you. Um, yeah, so thank you for watching, and I hope you have a nice day.